Hey everyone, welcome back to our DC News, the weekly web series dedicated to keeping you up to date with all the DC news from the past seven days. This is episode three, and today we are actually talking about DC news from the past 14 days, as last week there wasn't enough DC news worthy of an hour DC news episode. But fortunately, in the last seven days, we have had an increase in DC updates. So today we have a new video. So let's get on with the news. We start with the big update that James Gunn has confirmed the future of Gal Gadot as Wonder Woman, but did he actually mean to? Someone said to him, people are spreading the rumor about Wonder Woman in Creature Commandos with a certain actress, but I feel it's safe to assume that she hasn't been cast yet, correct? And Gunn simply answered with, correct. Confirming that Wonder Woman won't appear in Creature Commandos and also that she hasn't been cast in the DCU yet, and this actually means that Gal Gadot will no longer be Wonder Woman. Now this is something that I think most assumed, including myself, but here we have the confirmation of that being the case. Gal Gadot did mention last year that she had talked to James Gunn about making a Wonder Woman 3, but Patty Jenkins, the Wonder Woman director, had also said that DC Studios had no current interest in making a Wonder Woman movie. So up until now, now, we didn't really have a full confirmation, but James Gunn finally has confirmed to us that Gal Gadot will no longer be Wonder Woman for the DCU. And I'm actually glad this is the case. I thought Gal did a great job as Wonder Woman, but the DCU needs to be as fresh as possible and as little ties to the old universe. If Superman and Batman have been replaced, then Wonder Woman needs to as well. On Patty Jenkins' comment about DC Studios not being interested in a Wonder Woman movie, right now, don't be alarmed. They are not abandoning Wonder Woman in the DCU. We have Paradise Lost coming, which is a show dedicated to the Amazons, and I'm pretty sure the reason why Wonder Woman isn't a priority film right now is because they have a lot of other heroes and characters to introduce first. Wonder Woman is in that area where she is a very popular character, but isn't like Batman or Superman where she needs to be introduced right away. So the priority right now probably is the biggest characters they've got, like like Superman and Batman, as well as some smaller characters like the Authority and Swamp Thing. But moving on to the Lantern show, Gunn has confirmed that casting has not begun, but it is going well. And here is everything we currently know about the Lantern show. According to Nexus Points News, the Lantern show is planning to film in the UK in the first three months of 2025. DC Studios are looking for an actor for Hal Jordan aged between 43 and 49 years old, and a John Stewart between 27 and 35 years old. Guy Gardner, who will be played by Nathan Fillion in James Gunn's Superman, will also be joining the series which, if all goes smoothly, should be releasing in 2026. Now Lanterns is one of my most anticipated projects coming to the DCU. We haven't had too much in live action regarding Green Lantern, so I'm really excited to see what the Lantern show has to offer. My top three most most anticipated DCU projects are Superman, The Lantern Show, and then Batman Brave and the Bold. So I really am looking forward to this new DCU project. But now we move on to Homelander himself, Anthony Starr, who was asked if he was coming to the DCU, and he said he and James just play golf, but he is very excited to see what he does with the DC Universe. Starr said, I think he's a phenomenal director, producer, talent. He's one of the biggest brands in the industry, so I'm excited to see what he cooks up. Anthony Starr is one of the fan casts for Booster Gold right now and I think he would be perfect for that role. But as of right now, Starr is stating he is not going to be in the DCU. We now have another actor talking about DC. Top Gun Maverick actor Glenn Powell has said he has no interest in playing a superhero but would be interested in playing Batman. He said, I would have had a wild take on Batman. It definitely would not be like a Matt Reeves tone, it would probably be closer to Keaton. So the question is, would you want to see Glenn Powell as the DCU's Batman? Let me know in the comments below. Personally, I don't think he would be a good Batman Man, but many other actors have surprised me, so maybe he could do the same. Heading over to the Peacemaker side of the DCU, John Cena was asked if he would be in any other DCU 
projects, and his answer sounds like something we will most likely hear from most of the DCU actors going forward. He said, Do you know who James Gunn is? He's got this look when you make him mad, and it's actually indescribable, but I don't want to see it ever again, so I'm just going to say no comment. So he is keeping that information very close to his chest, but I imagine we will see Peacemaker pop up in quite a few DCU projects, as Peacemaker is James Gunn's DC baby. So I also want to know which DCU project in the future do you think Peacemaker will show up in? And now, flying over to the Superman movie, we have some new casting news, and I talked about this in the latest episode of The Road to Superman. Firstly, we start with the news that Beck Bennett is joining the Daily Planet crew as Steve Lombard. This was first reported by The Hollywood Reporter and then confirmed by James Gunn. Now, I only know him from SNL, and he is quite funny, which matches the character who he will be portraying in Superman. Steve Lombard is a notoriously arrogant character which tends to be used as comedy, and I think that will play right into Gunn's hands. Our next piece of casting news is from The Hollywood Reporter as well, who states Michaela Hoover and Christopher McDonald have been cast as Cat Grant and Ron Troop, which means the Daily Planet cast is stacking up. We have a total of seven characters just within the Daily Planet, and obviously their screen time will vary. For all we know, Cat Grant could just be seen on a TV for like five seconds or so, and Ron Troop the same. So don't be alarmed at the size of the cast. We also have a few new photos of our new Kent Farm to talk about. We first had these two photos of Kent Farm, which I didn't really like, but then DC Film News on Twitter released this new image, and my opinion completely changed changed. I think this looks far nicer, and through an IMAX camera, I'm sure the farm will look great. We have two final updates in today's episode, and they are both Superman as well. The first is that some behind-the-scenes photos were taken of the Superman set of an army base on a beach, and on one of the barrels, the logo Luther Corp can be seen, meaning the movie won't have Lex Corp, but instead Luther Corp. And one theory I saw for the name change was that maybe due to the events in this movie, Lex Luthor's company has its reputation tarnished by something Lex does, and so so in future DCU stories, Lex changes the company's name from Luther Corp back to the traditional Lex Corp in an attempt to rebrand the company. And the final update today is that the official slate for Superman has been revealed, and people are theorizing that the logo at the top of the slate could be confirming that the cape will have the iconic Superman shield on it. Personally, I think it would be really cool for the S to be back on the cape, but if it's not, then I'm not upset at all but let me know your favourite updates from today's episode in the comments below. But that is all for today's episode of Our DC News. Please make sure to like, subscribe, and turn on post notifications so you never miss an upload. I hope to see you here again next episode, so until then, I hope you have a great week. Bye!